spanning tree. Spanning trees. Suppose that G is a graph. What is a spanning tree? A spanning tree of G, of a graph G, is a subgraph of G. Subgraph means you take vertices from G and you also take edges from uh, G. You cannot create new edge or new vertices. Should be subset in some sense. Subgraph of G, such that is a tree, as the name suggests. It must be a tree, subgraph, as a subgraph. And it contains all vertices containing all vertices of G. That is the definition of a spanning tree. So example, um, let's say G is like this. No. Okay. Yeah, we have some la labels like that. Spanning tree is like this. Bas basically, we need to take all the vertices like this. The, in a spanning tree, we must have all the vertices. And it must be a tree, so it's connected. So you need to add, let's uh, use these red things. So maybe try to connect them all using the edges, only edges uh, in G. That means we have to really take this. But there are some choices. But there are many spanning trees. So this is one of them, right? It is a tree. So red, look at the red graph. It is, it is a tree, and it uses only the vertices, uh, edges in G, right? And it is a tree. Uh, it, is, it has all vertices of G. So it's a spanning tree, one example of a spanning tree. Spanning tree is uh, very useful because G, it is uh, very useful when you consider optimization. So suppose that you, you have these cities like this. Suppose that you want to kind of make a connection so that you can go from one, you, suppose that you make some kind of network. But you want to minimize the cost to build a network so that, but you still want that you can connect all the vertices, right? That means you need as uh, few edges as possible. You need to add, right? Because if you add, it's, it's good. It, it, it will be better if you have more connections, but it, it's more costly. You want to put as few edges as possible, but still you want to connect them all. So the spanning tree gives such uh, example of that. We will learn more optimizations of spanning trees later, but that's basically one uh, example of the application. So when do we have a spanning tree of a graph? Obviously, if uh, the graph, if G is not connected, disconnected, suppose that G looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Obviously, we cannot have a connect, uh, spanning tree because tree is a connected graph. You cannot have a graph containing all vertices and still connected, right? So if the graph is disconnected, you cannot have a spanning tree. But if G is connected, do we always have a connect, uh, spanning tree, meaning the con com um, converse is true? And it's true. Actually, it's quite easy to see. If theorem G has a spanning tree, If and only if, so if and only if, it's connected. That's all. That's the only condition we need. Very simple, right? How can you show this? 
Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's an if and only if condition, so we need to prove two directions. This implies this, A implies B, B implies A. The one direction is clear. So this one, this direction is clear, right? G has a spanning tree, must be connected because, you know, its subgraph is already connected. How can the original graph disconnect it? Okay, is that right? So the other direction is slightly more complicated. Okay, so the other direction means G is connected. We need to find the spanning tree of G. If uh, G is a tree, then what? Obviously, tree uh, true because you know just take G as a subgraph and it is a spanning tree. Then it is a spanning tree. Of itself. So spanning tree there exists a spanning tree. Nothing uh, difficult. If it's not a tree, then what happens? But it's still connected because that's the condition. Connected but not a tree, that means it has a cycle. Right? Because if it's not a cycle, meaning acyclic, Connected acyclic means it's tree, right? So it's not a tree, it's a cycle. The idea is, if you have a cycle, we can delete one edge, but still uh, the graph is connected, right? Delete one edge in the cycle. Consider one cycle and then delete one edge in the cycle. So the remaining graph is still connected because you know deleting an edge of a cycle cannot make the graph disconnected. And do this until you cannot find any cycle. You can do this until there is no cycle, right? If there is a cycle like this, just delete one edge and then keep finding. A, if there is a, still a cycle. Find the cycle and delete one edge, and then you do this until you don't have any cycle there. Obviously, you have to stop at some point. Then we have a, we still have a connected graph, right? Because we only deleted side uh, edges in a cycle, so cannot be disconnected. Then the remaining graph. Is what? Connected and acyclic, right? Or oh, end. Because it's connected and it does not have any cycle. But is this graph a sub subgraph of G? So it's a tree. So it's a tree. And a subgraph. Why is this a subgraph of G? Because we started with G and then we just deleted edges from G. So it's, it is a tree. It is a subgraph. Subgraph and tree contains all vertices. A spanning tree. It's a spanning tree. We just created a spanning tree. So that's it. Actually, it's quite easy. You know, just start with Z and then G and delete edges one at a time so that it's still connected. Eventually, you will end up getting a spanning tree. So when you have a connected graph, you have a spanning tree. How can you find a spanning tree? So actually, this, this proof kind of gives us an, a way to create a spanning tree, just delete edges from a, a cycle. But we want to ha have a more um, structured way of creating a spanning tree. So we will uh, consider two uh, useful ways to find spinning trees. They have names like this. <coughs>
The first one is called breath, breath first search. This is a way to find the spanning tree of a graph. So input is a graph. Connected, of course. Connected graph G uh, with uh, vertices, vertices, and we assume that it's ordered. Ordered like V1, V2, this order should be given to find a uh, spanning tree. And output is going to be a spanning tree. T of a graph G. What is the algorithm? Uh, it's actually quite uh, straightforward. Uh, first, start with the first vertex, which is V1, because we have these ordered vertices. Start with V1. And the next, find all uh, neighbors of V1. So find all neighbors of V1. And say that's so L1. So it's all vertices, all neighbors, say. What's next? So here in this first level, we have uh, vertices. And suppose that they are ordered. Just uh, put them in their order, given from uh, this ordering. And from there, find all vertices, like that. Neighbor of this, like that. So this, is, this will be L2. So find all neighbors of elements uh, in L2 in order given as given order. But of course, you know, uh, right, it's possible that these two are neighbor of each other in a graph because the graph may not be a tree, right? But of course, you cannot repeat the vertices. Only have new neighbors in L2, but not previously uh, used, because we want a, we don't want a tree. And repeat, and from there, you order them in this order, and then find the vertices connected to each vert neighbors of this, and L3 and etc. Keep repeating this until you find all vertices. Repeat until all vertices are used. That's how the algorithm works. So the breath means, you know, it's like you, uh, you are here, I don't know. You take a breath and then you find all vertices. Okay, uh, yeah, it's a general idea, but a specific example will be helpful. So let's look at this example. Oh, it may not be a simple graph, so we may have some multiple edges. <coughs> but let's just consider a simple graph, it doesn't really matter. A B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And vertex order is like, vertex ordering is like a natural order, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So let's find the spanning tree uh, uh, created by the breadth first search. So first, begin with what? The first vertex. Begin with vertex A, right? And then find all neighbors of A. 
So what are the neighbors of A? Uh, G, B, D, B, C, G. So this, this, and this. And B, C, G, they are in this order, right? B comes first, C later, and then G later. So find the neighbors of B that are not already here in this tree. So neighbors are B and G, but G is already used. So for B, we only have D like that. Okay? And C, we have uh, e and D, but D has been already used, so E like that. And for G, G has neighbors uh, E, B, but they are all already used. They've been already used, so we don't do anything. So the second layer has elements D and E. And from there, which one comes first? Uh, D. D comes earlier than E. Neighbors of D, C and F, but C has been already used, so F like that. And E has neighbors G and F, but they have been already used, so we don't do anything. Now, the third layer has only one element, A, F. So from F, the neighbors are E, uh, a, a, H, but E has been used, so it's H. And this, this is it. We found all vertices. It's a, it's a spanning tree. This is the result of the breadth first search. Of course, if you change the ordering, you will get a different tree. So the ordering is, uh, it depends on the ordering. So that's uh, breadth first search. Another one, another uh, important search is depth first search. Again, we have the same input. Uh, connected graph G. With vertices ordered. Like uh, V1, V2, dot, 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 VK. I say N. And output is a spanning tree. Algorithm. Depth first search, you just go as deep as possible. Just go like further and further until you cannot really go anywhere. That's the idea. Uh, first, uh, start with the first vertex, V1. And keep going, say, until no longer possible. So just go to another the neighbor, it's neighbor and neighbor again, finding new vertices at a, at a time until you cannot really go anywhere else. You are stuck at some point. And you know, V1 has many neighbors. And how do you decide which vertex to visit first? Use the ordering given, that given ordering. So here, uh, when we visit a new vertex, select the first one in the ordering. So for instance, if a, B, C, D, E, these are in order. Then if A has neighbors like C and F and G, then visit C first. And second, uh, when we get stuck, 
meaning you cannot find a new vertex anymore because the neighbors of it must have been already visited. Go back. Go back one step. And continue. Continue from there. If you're still, uh, you're still stuck there, go back one step and then continue. See if, if you can find a new vertex. And do this uh, repeat until all vertices have been visited. And this will be the spanning tree as an output. So the idea is just go like as far as possible. And once you get stuck, go back one step and then continue. Simple um, algorithm, right? Let's see an example with a, uh, the same example with uh, depth first search. So example, I'm drawing the same diagram, same. Same graph, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, right? Same ordering, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Now uh, we want to find the sp spanning tree obtained by the depth, depth first search. So first, A, right? Now find the neighbor of A. a which has not been uh, visited. So A, the candidates are B, C, and G. Which one do we visit first? The one that comes first in the ordering, so B. So first go to B, like that. And then see if you can go further from B. B has neighbors, D and G. They are not visited yet. Which one comes first? D. So visit D, like that. And then continue uh, to from D. So we can go either C or F, but C is the first one. C comes first um, uh, earlier than F, so go to C. And from C, we can go either A, uh, E, but A has been visited, so we have no choice to go to, but to go to E. E like that, right? Now what? We can go either F or G. Which one comes first? F. F. Now, you know, D has been already visited, so we have to go to F, uh, H. Now, can we go uh, further? No, we are stuck here. We cannot go anywhere else. So we have to go, we go back one step. F. And see if we can go somewhere else. Now all the neighbors of F have been uh, visited, right? So go back one, one step further, E. And here, can we go somewhere else? C, F have been used, but F, G has, hasn't been visited. So we can go to G, right? But now you can see, you know, everything has been visited, so that's the output. So this is it. The idea is quite simple. Just go further and further until you just stop and go back one step and do this again. And whenever you have multiple choices, you find uh, the, the vertex with, that comes first in this ordering list. So these two are quite famous uh, uh, searching tree algorithm. So they, in computer science, I think these algorithms are quite useful. All right, then we are going to the next section. This is an optimization problem that I mentioned. So minimal spanning tree.
Now we consider uh, not just a tree, uh, not just a graph, but a weighted graph. Weighted graph. Weighted graph means uh, you have some number attached to each edge. Let's look at this. So we have edge weights like three, two, two, four, one, two, three, like that. So these edges. Think of this uh, edge weight uh, as the cost to build the connection between these two, right? So if you want to uh, make a connection network between these two uh, cities, then it costs like two. Like this is the cost. There are many spanning trees, several, and let's consider two of them like this. This is a possible tree, and this is another possible tree. Then what is the cost to build the spanning tree? Three, two, two, three, right? So the spanning tree with total weight what? Two plus three plus two plus three, which is ten, right? What about this? This is two, two, one, and two. So here the, the weight is Total weight is two 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 one, which is uh, seven. Yeah. So if you have just two choices, this one would be better, a better choice, right? But you know there are many spanning trees. This one is quite simple, so you can list all the spanning trees and then compute the weight of each spanning tree and then find the tree with the smallest weight. That will be an optimal choice. But if the graph is more complicated, there are very, there are a lot of uh, spanning trees there. So you cannot really list them all if the graph is have graph has many vertices and edges. So we need to have a, but we still want a minimal spanning tree. Oh, by the way, the definition of a minimal uh, spanning tree is uh, is a natural definition, you know, weighted graph. A minimal spanning tree of G is a spanning tree, of course, with minimum weight. You want to find a minimum weight. There could be more than one minimal spanning tree. There could be several, many. But if uh, two of these two trees are minimal spanning trees, their weight must be the same because you know the weight is minimum. There are several trees attaining that minimum weight. That's possible. So we this is a uh, many situations we want to find a minimum spanning tree to uh, reduce the building cost. But obviously, like I said, if you list all the spinning trees, it's too much, too much of work. But fortunately, there is a simple algorithm to find a minimum spanning tree. There are several algorithms, and we will learn one of them. It's called Prim's algorithm. Uh, Prince algorithm is an uh, algorithm to find the, a minimal spanning tree. Just one minimal spanning tree. The algorithm is quite uh, simple. You know. uh, this kind of algorithm is called greedy algorithm. Usually, when we say an algorithm is a, gre is a greedy algorithm, it means you just don't 
uh, look at, don't consider the future, but focus on the present time and find the best choice that uh, benefits you at that point without worrying about the future. You know, greedy people are like that, right? They don't worry about the future and then they just choose the best possible choice given to them at given point, given t at, at every time. Are you a greedy person? Do you follow a greedy algorithm in your real life? I think you are not <laughs> because you are here, sitting here. You know, well, not everyone, because some of you really think that this is the best uh, moment in your uh, present time. If you increase your happiness at right, uh, right, right at this moment, I should come to this class. Maybe you can think of this if you really like discrete math or mathematics, or if you really like my lecture. <laughs> uh, I kind of doubt that, but <laughs> this is possible. But you are here, even though you you feel like maybe if I do something else, it, it, I would be happier at right now at at the moment. But but still, even if you think that you still decided to come here, because you you realize or you think that even though right now I'm a little unhappy sitting in <laughs> this lecture room, but maybe in the future the thing that I'm doing here may increase my total happiness if you think about the future. That's not a greedy algorithm, right? So you are not really using greedy algorithm here, most of you, I guess. But greedy algorithm, you know, just increase your happiness at every point. So it's quite simple. It's if you just follow greedy algorithm. So greedy algorithm does not always give you the optimal uh, answer, right? But sometimes it greedy algorithm gives you an optimum solution. This is one such example. Input. A weighted graph G uh, V comma E. Output a minimal spanning tree, minimal of G. So, uh, the idea algorithm, I'm going to so let me tell you the idea first. First, uh, set t to be an empty, empty graph. And then we, will go, we are going to increase this tree so that it becomes eventually a, a spanning tree. And idea is add a new vertex. Because we need to connect the older dots. Uh, add a new vertex. Vertex with an edge, let's say edge. So add a vertex and an edge. So if you add an edge, you will um, automatically add a vertex together. Add a new edge with a smallest weight. To increase the size that's it. Just find the new vertex uh, with the smallest weight. But of course, if this new edge creates a cycle, we should you should not choose that one because that is not a spanning tree. As long you may uh, find a new edge with smallest weight, so that adding a, that adding that edge still makes the graph asically. That's it. That's basically that's very simple, you know. So the algorithm, precise algorithm, goes like this. So first, t, I set t to be just one vertex. Take any vertex. And second, find an edge with smallest weight. But we don't want to connect two dots from t. 
So one dot from T and a new vertex, not in T. So uh, between uh, an edge between a vertex in T and a vertex not in T. So you create one edge and one vertex. Make the size bigger. And add this edge and the new vertex, of course, attach it to this edge. Vertex to T. This way we can increase the size of T until we find all we added all vertices. And that will be a spanning tree. And three is just keep doing one a uh, two until T becomes a spanning tree. That's that's it. Usually a greedy algorithm does not produce an optimal solution. If it produces an optimal uh, solution, we can prove it. We should prove it. Because in general, greedy algorithm doesn't always give you the optimum solution. But in this case, it does. But I'm not going to prove it. Uh, if you want to prove, see a proof, proof is not very difficult, but I'm, I don't want to do this in class. If you are interested in the proof, you can just read the textbook. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so maybe you can see an example. This description is simple, but you know, the, we, we really need, if you want to understand something, new, then you really need to look at some example. So we have vertices like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And we have edge, uh, edge labels or weight. Two, two, one, two, one, three, two, three, three, one, four, four, three, like that. We want to find a spanning minimum. Oh, yeah, one, one edge is missing, right? This edge, let's say, is four. So we have a graph, a weighted graph. Uh, we want to find a spanning tree using uh, Prim's algorithm. So first, we begin with a vertex. Let's say A. Yeah, T is initially A. Okay. I think we can just do this uh, just over this vertex, uh, the, over the graph. So T is this. Okay, initially. Now what? Find an edge connecting a vertex in T and a vertex not in T. How many edges are there? These three edges of the candidates, right? This and this and this. And among them, just select a vert uh, an edge with smallest weight. There are actually two possibilities. You can either choose this or this. Doesn't matter. So there are there can be several different outputs. So maybe. Which one do you want to choose? Up or down? Up, okay, up. Next, find, the vert uh, find an edge uh, connecting a dot in T and not in T, and, uh, and a dot not in T. So there are one, two, three, four possible candidates. Which one has the smallest weight? This one. It has weight one, so we select this. Now T is, has now three vertices, two edges, still a tree. Now find the vertex, uh, find an edge in T and, and uh, not in T. So not, this is not an edge that we are considering because it con con connects two dots in T. So this or this or this or this or this. 
We have one, two, three, four, five possibilities. And which one has the smallest weight? This one. So find this edge. Like that. So t, t is now this. And we have one, two, oh no, not this one. One, two, three, four, five, six possibilities. But this has the smallest weight. So find this in your, add this in your tree. Now what? One, two, three, four, five possibilities, but which one has the smallest? This, right? It has uh, two. Now, uh, you know, this, 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 uh, not this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six possibilities. And the weights are three or four, so th the on edge with weight three will be a choice. Actually, you can choose this or this or this, or this. You can choose any of this. Which one would you prefer? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Any one would be fine. Maybe this. It doesn't matter. You can choose anything. And finally, uh, no, not finally. Now what? We have one, two, three, four, five possibilities, but this has the smallest weight, so we have to choose this. Right? Now we have this or this. Both have the same weight, 3, so you can choose either. Maybe this. This is a possible output. So what is the weight here? 2 plus, you know, 2 plus, 2 plus 1, plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, which is? Uh, which is what? Three is seven. This is seven. Uh, five, eight, fifteen. Right. Try to find a different. You, you know, we had many, several choices, but they all give you uh, fifteen weight fifteen, and this is indeed the smallest weight possible. It is not clear, it is not obvious why we should get a s smallest or minimal spanning tree, but it can be proved.